to be willing to be wrong, to be completely humble to the fact, and to be completely haughty to man. What do you mean by that? Why well, haughty to man? No, otherwise you get laughed out of a right idea. In 1943, neurophysiologist Warren McCulloch and mathematician Walter Pitts wrote a paper modeling the first neural network using electrical circuits. For several decades, into the early 1980s, research and interest in artificial intelligence was almost non-existent. While most remained skeptical, Jeffrey Hinton, Yashua Benjil, and Jan LeCun were convinced in the potential of neural networks. There were a bunch of crazies like me and Jan and Yashua who all believed that great big neural networks with many layers of feature detectors could actually learn everything. But it just seemed utterly implausible, especially to people who thought that most knowledge was innate, that you could learn all this stuff with no, just from random weights. And I think people were quite, not unreasonable, to think that this stuff was crazy. But actually we were right. But it's when I started reading those connectionist papers, these early neural net papers of the 80s, that I realized this was the area I wanted to do research in. I was, I was definitely thinking I was, I was right the whole time. It's just that, you know, it would take time to convince the, the, you know, all of our colleagues because one of the main issues is that the computers were not powerful enough really to um, uh, kind of scale this up. And then the software that was required to run those things was fairly complicated to write at the time. We, we had invested the time in, in writing them, but nobody else wanted to basically you know, put the effort. The field of AI experienced a second winter from 1987 to 1993, but the winter for neural networks lasted even longer into the mid-2000s. Enthusiasm and investment in artificial intelligence once again disappeared. However, Hinton, Bengio, and LeCun continued to brave the storm, and in 2012, their work finally received wide mainstream acceptance after deep neural networks were used to identify objects faster than its competitors during the ImageNet challenge. Fast forward to the present, and Hinton, Bengio, and LeCun are now the 2018 ACM AM Turing Award recipients for their work on artificial neural networks. But there is still much work to be done in making AI smarter. Machines today have less common sense than a house cat, and we need to fix that. And I can see many places where I would say current AI is stupid and is lacking in understanding of the world around us. So the bulk of my research at the moment is on something I call self-supervised learning. Uh, it, it's kind of a new mode of learning that is sort of picking up within the community, which. Uh, the hope is that we will be able to train machines and have them learn uh, in ways that are similar to the way animals and humans learn. And so a lot of my current work is about how do we train systems so that they better understand how the physical world works, how um, um, the world of humans uh, can be understood by machines so that they can interact with humans. The the thing I'm most interested in at present is an idea I call capsules, which I've been working on for the last few years. The idea is to try and build into a neural network a little bit more knowledge about the world, so that a neural network automatically can recognize things from different viewpoints. The future of AI looks promising in what many are calling the next big thing with endless possibilities. What economists are telling us is that AI is uh, what they call a general purpose technology, GPT. Sort of like you know, the steam engine back in the old days or you know, the electric motor and things like this. It's going to progressively disseminate in, in all corners of the economy and, and lead to more productivity, which means more wealth produced per hour worked. So another thing that gets me really excited is what is happening right now in Montreal around Mila. You know, I started from a small lab with a handful of students and it grew and grew and grew and now it's a huge thing, it's a whole community, it's hundreds of people in this institute, it's a whole ecosystem of AI companies and startups and universities that are working together. A journey that has spanned more than four decades has finally come to fruition and is now being recognized by the ACM AM Turing Award. It's very nice to win it as a group. It's always more fun being part of a successful group. 
than sort of being all on your own. It's not uh, a price for a person. It's not a price for the three of us who got it. It's a price for the whole community that has made it possible to achieve the progress we've seen in the last decade or so. I'm so glad that that whole area is being recognized this way. If you have an idea and it seems to you it has to be right, don't let people tell you it's silly. Um, just ignore them. Learn more about the Turing Award recipients in the June 2019 Communications of the ACM.